Welcome to the Mentor to Engineer. This video will kick off a big series of how to build a backyard roller coaster. So roller coasters have always been fascinating to me. I love them. Uh, can't get enough of them. Now that my kids are old enough, they're getting into them. So uh, about to take uh, my two oldest kids to a uh, trip this summer. And uh, looking forward to that, going on the, the all the thrills and, and dives with them. Uh, so I wanted to build my own one. So believe it or not, this is not the first time that I've tried to make a backyard roller coaster. When I was in eighth grade, I went to a uh, trip to Magic Mountain, uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain in California. And uh, man, I was, I was, I wanted to do it. So got some stuff together. We had some scrap wood, uh, you know, a whole bunch of, of stuff like that. And I just started building and building and building. Uh, but I didn't know what I know today. So uh, it kind of became a flop. I mean, it, it ran, but uh, the first person to ever ride it you know the cart fell off luckily they didn't get hurt anyway so we're going to try to do it better now knowing what i know about engineering and uh, safety and uh, forces and stuff like that so all right let's before we begin this thing we need to first ask ourselves what makes a roller coaster good all right and there are some universal things that uh, we can bring to our uh, the table here that uh, makes what makes a roller coaster good, okay? So the first thing you want is you want speed, all right? It's gotta be fast. If it's a slow moving roller coaster, you just don't want it, all right? So speed is number one. All right, so even if we designed a roller coaster to be fast, it could still just be, it starts up here at a point and comes down. And yeah, that's fast, but it doesn't do anything. It, doesn't have any curves it doesn't have any hills so we're starting to get at what we want which is g-forces all right now g-forces are just a ratio of the actual acceleration you're experiencing compared to gravity all right so when you're uh, on a roller coaster and you come down that first hill right in the bottom of that hill you're feeling some pressure all right that's because you're you're trying to make a radius um, into it and as you know from centripetal force um, as you swing something around um, it creates a, t a tension force so that's mass times acceleration uh, is force all right so we can come up with uh, an acceleration just from coming out of the bottom of that hill all right and as we do that um, that's increased g so you have the force of gravity just from your mass and your weight coming down all right and then you have the, the cart, you know, basically forcing you up uh, into a circle that you don't want to be in. So that's increased G's. All right. So that's the first way we get G's. So that's, that's good. Uh, the second way is we can actually curve down and we can get uh, airtime hill. So um, as the, the, the hill goes like this and you have velocity, well, there's a certain radius here. All right, and you're actually creating a force up. And if your force gravity down is less, um, you're actually gonna get thrown out of your seat, which is a good thing. We wanna do that. So in addition to um, G-forces from uh, hills, we got curves, all right? So as you all can imagine driving around in a car as you go around a curve, um, you know, you have force wanting to throw you out the other side of the car. <clears throat> so this makes it a lot of fun when you go through like a four leaf clover type interchange where you're making a 270 degree turn and it's usually pretty constant and you're either going downhill or uphill. Um, and I like to gut it and just see how fast can I go around this thing uh, before the tire starts squealing. All right, so that's, that's fun. People like that, okay? So we're gonna try to incorporate that. Now, one thing that people do is they bank their turns um, so that you get the lateral Gs, but you're not being thrown out of the cart, you're being thrown further into the cart. So theoretically, if you bank your corner perfectly such that the angle meets the two uh, forces, uh, you're not gonna actually have to steer at all. It's just naturally gonna wanna go around that. So you're gonna be sliding down at the same way that your uh, force that you have pushing you back out 
um, and you'll you'll remain in a straight line yeah, theoretically so that's why we don't uh, plan on that no why we have uh, you know side wheels to keep us on the track all right so other things we want inversions maybe uh, barrel rolls uh, loops um, even uh, uh, some kind of uh, diving action uh, yes uh, we want those uh, I don't think that's where we're gonna go immediately but uh, further on down the road we might uh, do some of that so I think the best place to start with a loop or an inversion would be a uh, barrel roll all right I think it's the easiest one to work into a layout it probably takes the least amount of uh, effort and track design to do that uh, but what it is gonna uh, require is some understanding of jerk and we don't want to um, jerk people around too much all right so that's one of the things that we're going to struggle against is making this thing smooth and i'm going to show you some techniques on how to do that okay all right so like we said positive g's forcing yourself further in the seat negative g's throwing you out of the seat going around curves with lateral g's and um inversions and speed those are what we want okay so how can we make a small coaster compete with that? Well, it's actually not too hard. Okay, so let's talk about speed and how we can compete there, all right? So as you make a ride taller and taller, you don't actually get all that you think you're going to, all right? We can actually come up with some pretty good speeds um, on, a, on an eight foot hill. Okay, so when we're looking at hill height, all right, it doesn't make sense just to want to make it high, all right? And this is works great for a backyard roller coaster, okay? So let's just say that if I have a four foot hill, all right, uh, I'm gonna be able to get velocity as the square root of that with some other constants. So I'm just gonna call that uh, the square root is two velocity units, all right? And if I have a nine foot hill, which is two and a quarter times taller, I'm only gonna get three velocity units, all right? So I'm really not, adding all that uh, much by going from from a, a four foot hill to a nine foot hill uh, even though I've more than doubled the height all right and then that doesn't even include uh, drag from the cart or drag from uh, wind resistance uh, that kind of stuff so uh, it really doesn't make sense to want to have a gigantic hill uh, now what it does is your ride length gets longer and you can do more things in that ride. Okay. Uh, the other thing we want to do is um, we want to use terrain to our advantage. Now I have about a four degree uh, sloped backyard and I intend to have the lift hill up at the top of that and the roller coaster is going to go down and then you'll actually have to lift it up uh, further. I plan on having about an eight foot hill. All right, because that's about as much as I'm safe safe with. But I think it's going to be 12 foot uh, total uh, loss from the high end to the very low end. And I think that's going to make a good ride. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is uh, to, to make this compete is have a big drop at the beginning. Okay, and I want to make a tight turn out of that drop so that my uh, I, I experience, I want to get to three G's right there. So I will weigh, you know, the natural force of gravity plus two more um, from the radius here, uh, making my coaster uh, pretty good. Uh, then I want a couple of negative G uh, or zero G airtime hills. All right. And this, the first one will be a negative G where it'll actually throw you out. Uh, I'm planning on about a half a G that it'll, that'll lift me up and I can keep making my radius smaller and smaller until uh, that actually happens. All right, we'll get to the calculations in a little bit and how we're gonna actually look at this. All right, I want some bank turns um, and I want some speed. I'm actually thinking about at the end of the ride doing a uh, underbanked turn so that if um, I'm going to, I think it's gonna be a right hand turn, I actually wanna bank the track to the left and you know physically throw the rider out of it as he's going around this corner. Now, it's gonna be a, a big corner, so we're only looking at like uh, a quarter G or something, uh, throwing them out. But it, it's gonna be an interesting feeling. You know, you're gonna be leaning out the wrong side of the car as it pulls you 
uh, around the other way. Okay, so uh, those things are gonna make it exciting. All right, so design goals. There's a lot of these. All right, so first of all, I'm spending my money on it, so it's gonna be cheap. All right, I have a budget of $1,000. Uh, I would like to spend less than that. I was thinking uh, it'd be nice to get down to about 800, but we'll see. I'm gonna start off with 800. And uh, if it goes over a thousand, we're just gonna have to kill the project or find some funding somewhere else. So I wanna do most of the work here. I know there's gonna be some things that I just can't fabricate, but I have my own welder. I have a lot of shop tools, drill presses, uh, angle grinders, uh, welding machines. So there's lots that I can do. Uh, I think there's gonna be some laser cut parts that I want for accuracy that I am gonna have to purchase. Uh, along with that, um, I think PVC is the best material to go with for the track material. All right, it's cheap uh, and it has uh, the ability to flex on its own, but also it's made of plastic and can be formed. All right, and I think my, uh, my structure should be wooden. It's easy to get. I can go down to Lowe's and pick up a bunch of two by fours, whatever I need. Uh, I can set it on the ground, it's heavy enough but it's easy to form. I don't have to weld everything. I can just screw it together and uh, call it a day and I can make uh, quick supports of everything. The problem with wood is that it tends to split and crack. So uh, sealing these things so they don't split and crack is utterly important as well as making sure that our joint between the PVC rail and the uh, wooden cross tie is going to work well. All right, I'm gonna limit my loads on this to three G's down, uh, one G up, and uh, 0.7 G's to the side. And that's if I have a unbanked curve. All right, I wanna use those numbers because I think that that will be more than enough uh, strength in my cart uh, for, for anything I put at it. I don't want that cart failing. So those are the loads I'm planning on. Now, one of the great things about a roller coaster is you kind of actually already know all your loads that you can put into it. All right, it's not a guessing game of, well, how much does that weigh? How much am I picking up? Well, I know how much I weigh and how much the cart weighs, and I know what it's gonna go through, so I know all those loads. So I can actually kind of, I won't say scamp on my safety factor, but I can put it less than what I would have uh, for a machine that I didn't know what the loads are gonna be on it. All right, as I already mentioned it, this is not a kiddie ride. Uh, I'm gonna ride it. And uh, right now I weigh uh, about 220 pounds. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. I'm actually gonna design it for 240 pounds uh, and the weight of the cart. All right, the last thing I want from this is it's gonna be a temporary structure. It's not gonna be tied to the ground. Uh, you know, I'm not pouring concrete anchors and putting this. Uh, the only way it would be tied to the ground is if I find on a curve, like a highly banked curve, um, it's actually pulling away. I may want to stake it and tie those, um, those things, those, uh, supports to the ground. And that will probably be done using some, uh, temporary rebar that's just hammered through a hole in the structure. So that's about it. That's what I want to build. Uh, it's kind of been a dream of mine for a while. Uh, and I want to share all that with you guys as you, uh, hopefully, uh, join me on this venture. So I definitely need to give a shout out to Paul Gregg, who operates the website backyardrollercoasters.org. Uh, he has published these two books, uh, one for a, uh, he calls his negative G uh, roller coaster, which I just saw that he took down. Uh, this is an out and back uh, roller coaster, which is kind of cool. It's a great idea. Um, going out and then coming back allows the rider to enjoy a much longer ride than the track actually is. Uh, so that, that saves on costs. Uh, he's got volume one, which is the negative G, and volume two, which is his other two roller coasters. Um, and in this uh, resource here, it's actually an ebook. I printed it out and put it in a binder because it is such a great resource and I'm gonna keep it. He's done a lot of research on uh, things like PVC pipe, how the joints to the, the cross ties are, are done, how to form pipes. Uh, there's so much in here. Um, especially on the subject of steering. So if you're gonna uh, plan to do this, I would uh, definitely go download his books. All right, so you can get these eBooks on his website, backyardrollercoasters.org. 
Uh, I think uh, both of them together are like $34, $35. Uh, well worth the investment. Uh, like I said, tons of information in here. Okay, the last thing I have for this video is safety. All right, now I don't talk about safety much, but with this, it is critically important because we don't want to be getting injured, okay? Uh, and there's, there's things that we can design in easily uh, to make things safer, or at least get us thinking about how we're gonna do this uh, during the design process and not at the end of it when everything's built and we're like, oh, we got this problem. All right, so looking at safety, I've come up with these nine things for um, my design, all right? Paul Gregg has a very similar list in his book. Um, his roller coasters are designed more for his uh, grandkids. I think the oldest was nine or something at the time. Um, so, you know, these are small kids. Uh, since this is intended for um, adults as well as kids, uh, we're gonna do things uh, just a tiny bit differently, okay? First of all is no unauthorized use, all right? I don't want to go out in the middle of the night and find that people are riding my roller coaster. They've snuck into my backyard and all of a sudden they're using it. What's the deal with that, all right? So let's lock it down. Let's make sure that, um, you know, either we remove the cart from the track or better yet, uh, you know, just padlock it to the track, uh, cover it up with a tarp so it doesn't get rained on and all that fun stuff either. All right, we want to have supervision. Even if you're an adult, all right, I, want, I don't want to be out there by myself, all right? I can get hurt and if I'm just laid there and there's a whole bunch of stuff on top of me and there's nobody to help me get out of this thing, uh, you know, that's, that's not good. Uh, we, I need somebody there. Somebody should be supervising, even if it's just my uh, nine-year-old daughter who, uh, you know, if I fall off this thing or get hurt, go, go get mommy. Go call 911. You know, even that helps. All right. All right. Seat belts. All right. We don't want people flying out of the cart, especially since this ride is designed to do negative Gs. All right, so we're gonna put seat belts on it here. Um, Paul recommends having a seat belt one around your waist like you'd see in a car and then having another one up around your, uh, your chest. All right, that might be a little bit different from you know, a small kid to uh, me. Uh, we definitely don't want it slipping up to their neck and, and doing that. So that one may, be need, may need to be adjustable. The other thing about seat belts is we want them to attach to something that is steel structural, okay? We don't want it to just uh, wrap around, um, unless of course that, that wrap around spot is uh, based on a steel frame. All right, safety here, just we don't want to be able to touch the track. All right, once we're on there, we want to, you know, most likely it's going to be, we can uh, touch the, the wheels behind us. We don't want to get pinched in there. We don't want to even slide over it. We don't want to stick our hands in between the two tracks and get hit by the ties. All right, so, um, as we're thinking of these things, we need to be uh, reaching out there. I'm gonna have my six-year-old um, sit in the cart and try to touch things, and I'm gonna sit in the cart and try to touch things, and we'll see um, what happens there. All right, uh, along with that is, we should have some sort of fencing around our roller coaster. We don't want people just running up um, to it, watching the train go by real quick, and they're, they're right there, okay? Um, you know, so even if it's just, uh, you know, some caution tape or something that's just a, a, enough far back from the roller coaster so that uh, nobody will get hurt. And uh, all right, so uh, to, we're going to not motorize our lift hill. All right. I do intend to have some sort of pulley system where you can um, clamp something onto the cart and pull yourself up the lift hill. Uh, but. Uh, but it's not gonna be motorized. You're gonna to have to do that yourself, all right? Along with that is we don't want people rolling back down the lift hill, and we're gonna have anti-rollback devices on the lift hill, and only the lift hill, okay? Uh, also, I kind of skipped over this, but we're gonna load and unload at ground level, all right? We don't wanna be loading way up at the top, because um, that's, unless of course we have a, a normal platform there or something of that nature. Uh, but, uh, you know, I want this to be done at a ground level where if I fall, I'm not going to fall eight feet. I'm going to fall a foot and a half, two feet, something like that. All right. And then finally, testing. All right. So automatically, uh, before I ride this, 
uh, we're going to do multiple runs with somebody that weighs one and a half times me. And I don't mean an actual person. I'm probably going to go get some cement bags and strap them to the cart and make sure the cart, the track, and everything uh, works just fine as we, uh, as we do that. And I'm periodically going to do that. Um, I've, I've heard that um, roller coasters put uh, sandbags in their, their rides at the beginning of the day. I don't know if it's every ride every day. Uh, but they do that to, to test the ride to make sure that everything's uh, working correctly uh, before they ever uh, allow real people in there. All right, so we're going to do the same thing, but instead of a 240-pound person, it's going to be 360 pounds of cement. That's, uh, what, four and a half bags. Uh, so that'll be fun. Get that up there. Uh, and also, I will say that uh, I'm going to have two different design factors for this ride, all right? So the first one is um, when I'm, I'm doing a, a calculation on something like 3Gs, my first one is going to be uh, for, for all the supports and the cart calculations is going to be uh, a safety factor of one and a half times the one and a half uh, pounds I'm, or one and a half times the load I'm going to use for testing. So that'll bring us up to a 2.25 for just about everything, all right? I know the loads that's just above the fatigue limit for all these, uh, for all the, all the steel materials. And it, it, it's gonna be a good factor of safety. It's gonna make, give me that warm, fuzzy feeling in there, all right? The other thing is uh, I'm not so sure about uh, having the PVC pipe mount to the end of a two by four because uh, we're going right into the end grain, and I don't like that. So there, I'm going to increase the safety factor to a three. All right, well, that concludes our first video here of the base works of building our backyard roller coaster. I hope you all join me on this adventure as we do something really cool here. All right, until later. Thank you for watching. Hey, we appreciate you watching this video. Uh, if you want to know more about building your own roller coaster, please go to www.mentorengineer.com slash rollercoaster.